Hi, I'm Jim, the Quick Fix Tips Guy. Today, I'm going to actually do something a little different than fixing something. I've been asked by a director to talk about how to put a clarinet together for her kids so that she can talk to other students and help them put their instruments together, like the trumpets. So this will be for the clarinet players. So the first thing you want to do when you put a clarinet together is make sure you have a flat surface to put it on. I like to use the lap. Now, if you're a short person and you're sitting in a chair and your lap is slanted downward, you can always use the floor. Let's use the lap for that, this demonstration. First thing you want to do is make sure that the brand name is facing upward. That way you know that the top of the clarinet is up. So when you open it up, everything's sitting where it should be. All right, now, after you open it up, you want to make sure that you take the reed out. And this is a handy dandy reed to reed protector and I like that because a lot of times reeds come in this kind of a protector and it's really hard to get it back in and you really run the risk of chipping it and this is very delicate right here you don't want to chip it or crack it and so it always plays for you so you put it in your mouth and then while you're putting the instrument together you can be soaking the reed at the same time now just so you can understand what I'm saying better I'll pretend that it's already soaked so we'll put that away I always like to build from the bottom up. So the bell is really the bottom of the clarinet. So you take that and then the large piece called the lower tenon that has the two buttons here and it, you're gonna put it together with the bell. First though, you wanna always grease the corks, especially if it's a newer clarinet or new corks. This happens to have very new corks on it. So you want to grease the corks and then take the bell and just twist, twist, twist all the way on, okay? Then you take the other large piece called the upper tenon and it's got cork on it. So for saving time, let's just say that I did put cork grease on that. Now you've got the bridge key here that I'm moving with these keys to press it, go up. You take this end, this is very important, and this is the other end of the bridge, and you put it together, and then you lift up the bridge and slide the bottom piece under it, like that. Very important that you don't bend this or get this on top of the other one. Then you're ready for the barrel. Looks like a barrel, so they call it a barrel. Grease the corks, then you put the cork on. Usually there's a, a narrower end, and a wider end, and the wide end goes on first, like that. Then you have the mouthpiece, and you put the mouthpiece after putting some cork grease on, and then twist, twist, twist. Then you wanna make sure that this flat side here is lined up with the thumb rest. So I'm gonna turn it a little bit, line it up. Looks pretty good. All right, now I'm ready for the reed. So my reed's been soaking in my mouth, Take the flat part of the reed, put it against the flat part of the mouthpiece, and you just rest it there. Hold it with your thumb while you take the ligature. A ligature is anything that holds something together, it's just a fancy name. And you very carefully, without chipping the reed, slide it over and down as far as it'll go. Once you've got it down as far as it'll go, you tighten it until it's snug. Don't over tighten you can strip the threads and you can also make the reed so tight that it doesn't vibrate very well and you can't get a good sound. A number of mouthpieces have a line here and here so you want to make sure that if you have those lines that your ligature is between them. All right now the other thing you want to do with your reed, I'll loosen it up a little bit, is make sure that there's a little bit of black showing across the top. I call it the horizon and, and I seem to have that pretty good. Line it up down here at the bottom also. You've got it lined up down here and up there. Then you snug it up. And then you're ready to play your clarinet. Now I'd like to show you how to properly take the clarinet apart. So you actually go in reverse order to a point. You loosen up the ligature screws, take the ligature off then while holding the reed in place. Then you're ready to take the reed off and put it away to dry flat in the reed protector. Now you've got this apart 
it's time to swab. You must swab every time you get done playing because if you don't, the water sits inside and it can get on the fine membranes of the pads and then they rot. Pretty soon you need a repad job and that can be $150 to $200. So you want to save your parents some money. Now you take the weighted end of a swab and you put it in the biggest opening, which happens to be the bell. And then you feed it in and then the swab goes in the bell. Now, a lot of times kids make the mistake of pulling it really fast. If you do that, sometimes you can get hooked on a little piece of metal that's in the thumb key and then it's stuck. It's hard to pull out. Then you pull it through and it comes out and you have now wiped out the water all the way through the mouthpiece. Now another thing I want to show you is that you'll notice that the swab is completely unraveled. It's completely out. Sometimes kids put it in like that, it's not quite unraveled and it can also get stuck. So you feed it through until the weight comes out the mouthpiece. It doesn't hurt to do it a couple times like this. Okay. Then you set aside the swab, you take the mouthpiece off, put it in its rest in spot, which you can also take the ligature. Now, if your hands are small and this is a bit for both to do, you can just wait until your hands are free. And then you press the keys, lift up that bridge key, twist. All right. And then put that in its home happens to be, whoops, I forgot a step. I need to take the barrel off first. Forgot about that. Then you take the two large tenons apart, put them there, and finally the bell, which is, because of the new corks, a little bit sticky. Put the bell in, put that there. Now, this is also pretty important. You just take this swab, fold it in half, and wrap it up. If you don't do that, you get a lot of little knots. See how all these knots are right there? That's from the swab not being put away correctly many times. And then it fits really nicely right there. Close up the case, and you're ready to go. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, head to my channel and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified when another video comes out.